Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at the Weibull distribution and what we're looking at it is from the point of view of actuarial statistics and financial maths, which is where it would be used quite a lot, as well as engineering subjects as well, but here it's actuarial and financial. So claim amounts on a portfolio of insurance policies are assumed to follow a Weibull distribution. Uh, one quarter of losses are below 15 and one quarter are above 80. Okay, so essentially what we have here are the quantiles. Q1, the 25th percentile, is 15, and the 75th is 80. Okay, now, uh, first question is explain why claim amounts from general insurance policies are typically modeled using statistical distributions with heavy tails. Now, this is one that's really for the actuarial students. Okay, I'll just briefly answer it here shortly. The real question I want to ask is, or look at it, is this one here, estimating the parameters. Now, this is an important thing here, and you might notice it from comparing it with, against my other presentations on the Weibull distribution. Here, the parameters are C and K, okay? And this is important because the Weibull distribution can be parameterized in m several different ways. And there's actually like two or three at least. And this is very important because you have to actually know which way, way it's parameterized before you're answering your question, okay? Uh, the last question is determine whether or not this Weibull distribution has a heavier tail than that of the exponential distribution with parameter C with the same parameter, okay, by considering your estimate of K. Okay, so essentially this one is commenting on the significance of K. Okay, so it's essentially the relationship between the exponential distribution and the Weibull distribution. Now that question would be more focused towards engineering students uh, who might, where it becomes more relevant, particularly in the context of reliability theory. Now, let's look at the Weibull distribution here. So this is the PDF of the Weibull distribution. Now you notice that it's denominated in terms of alpha and k, where k is the shape parameter and lambda is the scale parameter of the distribution. Now this is the conventional way of specifying the Weibull distribution, but just for the sake of simplicity, um, you know, essentially there's a reparameterization would take place, okay? Just to sort of uh, slightly adjust it. This is the cumulative distribution function, okay. Now, in this case we're asked for, uh, we're uh, looking in terms of C and K, okay. Parameterized as C and K. So what you can do is state, or define the uh, C as the inverse of uh, lambda, okay. And that uh, cumulative distribution function can be re-expressed as follows. Now, the key point here is 1 minus the exponential of minus, in brackets, Cx to the power of k. Okay. So that's a C there. Okay. Actually, I should, really should have made that square brackets. Okay. So Cx in brackets and uh, minus that, okay? Now, uh, just as a remark, there's a slightly different parameterization using Bxk. So there's a different one here there's where you denote, denote, denote it in terms of B. And B is actually, uh, just off the top of my head, lambda to the power of minus k, something like that, I think. I'll just check that. Well, I should, it, where relevant, I'll have it presented. Okay, but essentially C and B are not the same. So this is like, and I'm, I'm deliberately throwing you, uh, uh, you know, varying uh, parameterizations to just keep you on your toes. Okay, so I'm not going to keep consistent because books will not keep it consistent. Okay, so it's it's deliberately I'm going to deliberately mix it up. Anyway, I digress. Insurance claims. Look, this is the one for the actuarial students. Uh, insurance claims are often positive, very positively skewed, with large claims often being several multiples of smaller claims. Okay, so this would be the type of thing that financial maths and actuarial students would be familiar with. And so as a result of that, in that these sort of uh, scenarios would favor distributions with heavy tails. Okay. 
Now, from the cumulative distribution function, so we're going to answer this question. Remember that Q1 is 15 and Q3 is 80. Okay, so the probability of being less than 15 is 25%. The probability of being greater than 80 is also 25%. Okay, now, um, so essentially what we're going to do is use this here, this expression here. Okay, now x here is 15 and 80 in both cases. Okay, now, so essentially what we do here is uh, for both of these expressions, the one for 80 and the one for 15, essentially what we could do is write them out or re-express them al algebraically. So we have C times 15 to the power of K, that is equal to minus the log of 0 0.75. If you do, do the same sort of calculation on the equivalent of this, you'll end up with C times 80 to the power of K, and that is equal to minus log of 0 0.25. So essentially what we're gonna do here is divide those out, and the C cancels, the C term cancels, and we're gonna divide those down, okay? Uh, we just ignore the minus signs because they will sort of cancel out as well, okay? So 15 to the power of K divided by 80 to the power of K, that is equal to 15 over 80 to the power of K. You can take the K, the power of K out and put it in brackets, okay? You can, uh, so 15 divided by 80 to the power of k, that is log of 0 0.75 divided by the log of 0 0.25. That is 0 0.207519. Again, I put it to several decimal places to uh, just make it easy to follow so you know what you're doing when you're, you see how close you are if you're trying it out on your calculators. So working on that mathematically, essentially we have to use logarithms, laws of logarithms, okay? So that's the laws of logarithms and the laws of exponentials are very important in this stuff here. So you might have done them in first year mathematics, but you have to sort of keep up to date in those. Use the laws of logarithms and so on. Okay. So the log, get the log of both sides. And that is log as uh, log of 0 0.20519 divided by log of 15 over 80. That is 0 0.9394. So K is equal to 0 0.9394. Uh, using one of those expressions there previously, you can work out what C is. C times 15 to the power of K is minus log of 0 0.1, 0 0.75. So divide both sides by 15 to the power of K, 15 to the power of 9.09394. Bit of calculator calculator work there. You should get zero equals uh, c equals zero point zero two two six. Okay. Now uh, I skimmed through them very quickly. I don't want to spend a lot of time in this because it does get quite a lot of uh, small steps. But the laws of logarithms are the key thing there. Okay, and just straightforward algebraic rearrangements though okay that's all exponentials and laws of logarithms they pop up and this sort of stuff quite a lot um now the again and the another other thing was another sort of key part of this uh, presentation really is just sort of the again just reiterate which parameters specifically are you being asked okay it's not, it's not alpha, it's not lambda, it's not B, it's C and K, okay? Now, so this is the interpretation of K. Now K is, let's go back up here actually and just see the proper name of K. K is the shape parameter, okay? And this is essentially the shape parameter tells you the, how heavy the tails are, okay? And for k is equal to 1, that's equivalent to the exponential distribution. So the y-build distribution is sort of what we're doing here is essentially benchmarking it off the exponential distribution. Now, if k is less than 1, okay, that means that the y-build distribution has a heavier tail than the exponential, okay? Which is to sort of say that under the y-build distribution that... Um, you know, yeah, essentially the heavier tail, there's a heavier tail, okay? If it was greater than one, uh, that means it would be have a, 
a, a, a, a shorter tail or a lighter tail or a thinner tail. Uh, that would become relevant in reliable theory, reliability theory. This is related to claims, but essentially in reliable, reliability theory, it would relate to lifetimes and uh, durations and so on. And in that case, it would tell you, like, you know, how how light, how light heavy tail is, how lightly is something to reach an old age. Okay, which is relevant to actuarials as well, I suppose. Um, okay, so that's it really. We'll leave that there. I didn't want to dwell too much on that because I'm going to... Um, I hit on the key points I wanted to raise there. Okay. Now it's 10 minutes in, so that's that's time to wrap it up.